This is so amazing. I don't know where to begin with this. I mean, this is like a Professor Xavier type thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, was worked on by Professor, so it's somewhat fitting. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I guess, yeah, talk about the origins, how this got started about this, like, gaming mouse that's, like, you kind know, of reads your thoughts, you know? Yeah, yeah, so I've got it on here right now. This is a version of Impulse that's in between our beta and our final release version that'll be going out in May. Um, but basically, Brink Bionics started as a prosthetics company out of the engineering bionics lab at the University of Waterloo. Uh, at the time when we started Brink Bionics back in, I think, 2017 now, um, we were working on AI-controlled prosthetics. So basically using artificial intelligence as the translator between the human nervous system and the machine to create prosthetics that were more intuitive to control. Um, we developed down that path. Uh, both my co-founders, uh, Dr. Jai Wen He and Dr. Ning Zhang, are both um, leaders in the space of neural interface and myoelectric control research. So they've been kind of leading the charge on the technology side. And we decided to pivot away from medical devices and into gaming and esports, uh, in part because we really wanted to be a company that rapidly innovated on neural interface technology and we thought to do that effectively, we needed to be a company that had sort of a wider uh, audience of users with less barriers to entry. Like you can sell a consumer device much easier than you can sell a medical device. Um, and the second reason was uh, there were already a lot of prosthetics companies doing what we were doing. There were already companies making these really amazing affordable limbs with integrated AI. So we thought we could either keep doing the same thing that everybody else is doing or try to find a totally new avenue for this technology by building it into esports, which um, had not been done before as like a targeted device specifically for gaming for neural interfaces as it relates to this form factor. I love this. So basically it, it you still got to click the mouse yourself, but it's taken the time that it, you, I guess the brainwave says to your finger to do it down. Uh, I forget how much it was of watching the video. Uh, up to 80 milliseconds. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah, the gaming, that's big, you know, especially with the esports when you need just that little, little bit of help, you know? Exactly. I mean, the newest gaming mice that come out, I think Logitech released their light speed technology last year uh, or the year before, and that dropped your latency, you know, compared to competitors by maybe, you know, 10 to 20 milliseconds. And that was a whole new mouse built just to give you that much advantage. Mm -hmm. So we really, we do something very similar to other companies that try to reduce latency through gaming mouse or like NVIDIA through their reflex technology. Uh, the only difference is we use the nervous system whereas they optimize communication and processing. So it's just a new way of approaching a, a very similar problem. All right, well, let's check out a demo if you can, you know? Okay. Okay, so we've got that coming through and then I think I just need to enable video. And I really like the, the the look of it. I mean, it's kind of got like that old school power glove kind of look to it. You know? Yeah, we've definitely heard that comparison a lot. And I guess um, initially we're like, oh, you know, power glove comparison is that, but it really is kind of the next uh, a new a new way of approaching that kind of oh, wearable yeah. technology yeah. for gaming. Um, okay, so um, what I'll do is I'll walk through kind of what our beta interface looks like. Um, now, keep in mind, this interface that we have right now in this software version is not going to be the final one that launches to users. This is mostly for our developers. Yes. Um, so the final one that launches will be uh, more effective actually walking users through and teaching them how to use Impulse. Um, so basically, when users start up Impulse, this is what they see. Um, and then we'll go to the next, which is to calibration. So from this window, you'll see your few different muscle signal channels. So on Impulse, we have four different muscle signal channels uh, that are picking up your, your uh, EMG signals from the muscles in your hand. So that's these four individual boxes or modules here. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, and this window is basically for users to you know, calibrate the device, make sure they're getting a uh, good signal quality um, before they jump into the training process. Gotcha. So, um, and then as you can see, if I move my index finger, you'll see that activity in the top left corner showing up. And that's that neuromuscular data uh, being measured by the sensors in my, on my hand. Um, so I'm just gonna see if I can get the noise down that one a bit. Okay, let's go through the training and see how it is. So there's a couple different options when we jump to the training. Um, users can either train impulse to only recognize left click, only recognize right click or recognize both. 
Um, as users start to learn it, I always recommend starting with one, either left click or right click. And then once they get used to activating those signals reliably, um, then they can uh, advance to activating both at the same time. So I'll do both for the purposes of this demo, um, but there's definitely a learning curve. So what we're doing first here is this next process will teach the machine what our neural patterns look like. And then the next step after that is for the user to then learn how to activate those signals reliably. So it's, there's very much a two-way learning process with it. Go ahead and hit start. And all Impulse is doing now is it's assigning neural data to clicks. Gotcha. It's learning. <laughs> exactly. And this process maybe takes you know 30 seconds to a minute to walk through. Now, I see you can have it on a right-handed one now, but does it also come in like left-handed ones to, too? Uh, yeah, we have a left-handed version for users that are left-handed users. Okay, so now it's building that neural model uh, and the results we'll see pop up will just be, will just tell us if we're good to move forward or if you wanna go back to training. So those are good, so I'll move on with the next step. Um, those numbers that I saw, we see in this window with the report, these won't be user facing as what we found is that the system is able to detect even uh, a few clicks, the user can then manually customize the system to make it perfect for them. Um, so what I mean by that is that's with the uh, sensitivity adjustments in the corner. So with you know DPI settings on your mouse, I can adjust how sensitive my mouse is to movements. With impulse, you can adjust how sensitive it is to your neural signals. So the higher the sensitivity, the smaller the muscle activation is needed to trigger a click with impulse. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's what allows users to customize it to their nervous system and how easily they can control those neural signals. If they're new to it and they're not as good at controlling those signals, they can lower the sensitivity, get used to it, and then raise the sensitivity up as they get more proficient. Ah, gotcha, nice. So um, I'll do a couple of clicks just to explain what this interface is showing. So right here you see, um, now again, this is not what the final version will look like. It's kind of a jumble of numbers and text, not ideal. Um, but here you see IP left down click. And that's basically the computer detecting uh, impulses uh, click. So that's the click from your muscle signals. This one here says OS left click. That's the mechanical click from your mouse. And these two are just the computer's timestamps. So what you're seeing from the timestamps is there's a noticeable difference of like of, you know, 30 plus milliseconds in the detection between the muscle signal and your actual mechanical click. And then this final value down here is how much faster impulse was than your mechanical mouse. So fascinating. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so that's um, that's the extent of the interface. Um, a couple other settings that users have access to are in the hotkeys. So in speaking with users, what, what we found is for playing games like Fortnite, users only want to um, play with impulse using certain mechanics. So they'll want to use it for shooting uh, and uh, you know combat engagements, but not for building. So the input, the toggle allows them to a user to map um, any keyboard hotkey to impulse to rapidly activate and deactivate it. So if there's a time you don't want to use impulse and you want it off, then you can turn impulse off and it won't without interfering or pausing your gameplay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, a nice little shortcut. Exactly. Is it just plugged in as a just USB port, basically, or. Exactly. So right now it's USB, it's USB plugin. And that was a couple of things. We wanted to make sure our first version was as low cost as possible and wire connection allowed us to do that. And it also allows us to make it as low latency as possible. Nice. And does the gloves come like one size fits all or different sizes you can buy? So it's different sizes and we have um, a sizing chart that you select based on the width of your hand. So, uh, and then you'll be able to select from right now we have for our beta, we had sizes from small to extra large. Uh, but based on our user's feedback from the Kickstarter that we did last year, we'll be expanding those sizes out to accommodate more people. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I got tiny hands, so. <laughs> yeah, I need, yeah, medium, it usually works for me. And then we had some users who even the small was was too big. So we're, we're spreading that out a bit to make sure it fits nice. everybody because that fit is super critical. Yeah. Okay, so that's the um, that's the basic interface. Now I can jump into, let's see if Halo works. Uh, it wasn't working before. Um, and just jump into some gameplay and show you in action. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Okay, so yeah, it's still running into a problem, but I'll throw up Aim Lab because that was working before. And then I'll be able to show you at least the, the function of impulse for, for shooting mechanics. 
And you said this is uh you did a Kickstarter, so is it shipping sometime soon or sometime later this year or uh yeah, so it's shipping in May. May, nice. And then we still have uh, an Indiegogo up as on demand. It's sort of an online store. If anybody missed our Kickstarter campaign and wants to still buy in. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I've got aim lads up. Uh, let me just pull up a quick. Yeah, grid shot works. Um, I like the Christmas and... sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> good theme. Um, okay, uh, yep, that's good. And then I'll show you kind of me so right now I don't have my hand on the mouse and I can click to begin. And now I've just used the neural input to click. So I'll show you that again. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just using very slight oh. muscle activations to fire. I so yeah. I've gotten to the point where I barely have to move my finger in order to trigger impulse to shoot. And then here it is actually clicking with the mouse. Oh. So our software in the background also helps, helps to prevent uh, double clicking as well. Because normally oh, you get good. you know you have the impulse signal and the mechanical click, so it helps to prevent the that interference. So amazing! Wow. <laughs> and then you can also use that's right click for aiming down sight. Mm -hmm. oh, very cool. And then again, that's yeah without, and then that's right click without. Oh gee, look at that! <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> it is like magic. I love it. So yeah, so that's people the extent. eventually just don't even touch the mouse. They just have their fingers up. What do you think eventually? What, what's been the it depends. It, it depends for from user to user. Uh, as you get more proficient with it, like I've been using it since we've been developing it for more than a year. So I've got I'm able to play without clicking. Uh, we have another demo uh, on our YouTube channel of me playing Ghost Runner, and I've actually I took an old uh, Corsair mouse that I had. I ripped the arm run switches for left and right click out of it, so I only used impulse to play. Uh, for the entire demo. So you can get to that point of using only the neural input for left click and right click. Uh, and that's where the learning curve comes in. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it probably takes a lot of training to get to that point. But wow, so amazing. I love Thank it. you. So, um, so you said you got an Indiegogo for people who missed the Kickstarter. Uh, I guess is that on the website? Um, what's the website link? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the website is brinkbionics.com. And right now that uh, links right to our uh, Indiegogo. Cool. And you know, on social media, so and we can follow and I'm sure you're going to have updates along the way. Definitely. So yeah, we're on uh, Twitter um, and then Facebook as well. So Twitter is uh, at Brink Bionics and then we have a Facebook group as well. Well, Eric, keep up the amazing work. This was this amazing, epic. I can't get over this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, hopefully next year I'll actually be see you in person at CES in Las Vegas and we can do an actual demo then. So I hope so too. We'd love to have more people actually be able to get their hands on it. So fingers crossed we'll be there.